So my title is RNA based therapy for cardiac genetic disease. And actually, it's more, it was a question mark in, in the past. Now I remove the question mark. And um, actually, I, I will focus on hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is the most uh, prevalent cardiac uh, genetic disease. And uh, I wanted to start with uh, the early description of this disease, which was done actually in Italy by uh, Giovanni Battista Morgani. And um, this uh, person actually wrote uh, the Bible for human anatomy in, in, in the 1800th uh, century. And he described in, in, in his Bible, a coachman died suddenly in his carriage whose heart was larger than that of any bullock another sudden death of a heart far exceeding its natural bulk. And actually, this is really what happened in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So the second uh, uh, picture I took, it's from a French, so I think it's, it fits for you and for me, but uh, not because he's French. Actually, he was neurologist on, in La Salpetriere Hospital where I was uh, starting genetics, but uh, mainly because I think he's a, the first who describes the retrécissement uh, de l'orifice ventriculo aortic or sub aortic uh, structure in uh, actually the, the 19th century. And uh, this was really the, the first uh, accepted description of hypertrophic cardiopathy. So today, what do we know about this disease? We know that it's a, 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 a myocardial disease, which is mainly asymmetric and involves the interventricular septum and it's also associated with a myocardial disarray and the uh, huge accumulation of interstitial fibrosis. What we know as well is that hypertrophy is mainly associated with diastolic dysfunction, and uh, normally the patients, they have a preserved Asian, uh, systolic function, except if they go further into uh, 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 worsening the phenotype, and then they can develop heart failure with systolic dysfunction. And there is association as well with energy depletion. <clears throat> So another important thing is that the general pro uh, prognosis, uh, prognosis of this disease it doesn't differ too much from the general population, but HEM is known to be the leading cause of sudden cardiac death, and particularly in young athletes. And you can see here that HEM represents 36% of the sudden cardiac death in young athletes. So, that, so there is a need for, uh, to go further also with uh, therapy. So this was the first uh, pedigree which was described in the 1958 by the group of Thierry. And uh, at that time, he actually was the first to describe asymmetric septal hypertrophy in a, in a patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And you can see this pedigree, this is an autosomal dominant uh, transmission. And in addition, you can see as well with the slash, uh, slash bars that there is a lot of uh, many uh, sudden cardiac deaths in this uh, family. So this, is, this, could be a very, uh, 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 this could be also family with a severe phenotype and, uh, and a very bad prognosis. So the first uh, gene was discovered more than 20 years ago by the group of Christine Seidman in Boston. And uh, the first mutation was a, a missense mutation in the beta myosin levy chain. And uh, this was uh, actually the, the beginning of the, op the, 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 beginning of the genetics in, in the cardiovascular field. <clears throat> and I, at that time, I started in Paris, and uh, actually we found one of the two first mutations in the, two, the second uh, uh, gene, which is the cardiomyosin <coughs> manipotin C. And what you see on this table is that this has a gene name. Most of, this, uh, uh, most of the affected genes encode components of the cardiac sarcomere. And uh, you can see as well here that the two most frequently mutated genes are beta myosin chain and cardiomyosin manipotin C, uh, the second one I will focus on today. So this is a, a, a sarcomeropathy. Hypertrophic cardiopathy is considered as a sarcomeropathy, and it involves most of the, maybe, maybe all, I don't, we don't know yet, most of the components of the cardiac sarcomere. And uh, I will focus on myosin manipotin C, which is a, a protein which interacts with actin, titin, and myosin and which uh, plays a regulatory role in the contraction and the relaxation. It's phosphorylated, and uh, it's located in the uh, C zone of the A band of the sarcomere. In other words, it's located of, uh, 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 in doublets around the M line of, of the sarcomere. So um, today we like to focus on this mutation particularly. 
This is a G2A transition on the last nucleotide of exon 6. It's located here. And this mutation is part of the consensus splice site uh, sequence. And uh, when we started this work, actually, we didn't know anything about uh, the consequence of this mutation in human. But we predicted that there will be a skipping of the exon 6 and the uh, appearance of a premature termination codon in exon 9. And uh, therefore, the production of the wild type allele, because it's autosomal dominant, and uh, a production of uh, largely C terminal truncated proteins. So, why is this uh, a mutation? We know that it's uh, very frequent in, uh, in, 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 uh, in humans. It represents 13% 13 13 percent of unrelated HCM patients, and particularly in Tuscany, where there is a Fonder effect. And uh, therefore, this is 30 percent of myosin many protein C positive patients. So, there is a, a, a wish as well to uh, try to treat patients with this uh, mutation. So um, then we got the, 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 the possibility to get some myocardial tissue from this patient. And you can see here by RT-PCR uh, the results of uh, two patients versus a control. And you see the expression of the wild type allele and also the presence of this nonsense mRNA, which correspond of uh, frame shift due to the skipping of exon 6. So this uh, nonsense mRNA is it expressed at a very low level because it's degraded by the nonsense mediated mRNA decay. And uh, you see at the protein level that there is a lower level of the full length uh, C protein in these patients. And the expected mutant, truncated mutant, was not uh, uh, present. So what we did then, we, I mean then in parallel or before, we knock uh, the mutation in the mouse genome and we produce uh, heterozygous and homozygous uh, mice. And here as an example of what we obtain for the heterozygous mice, which mimics the human situation. And you see here that, like in human, there is production of the mutant 2. Uh, we name mutant 2. Uh, you will see later why, which contains this uh, premature termination codon. But we also found that there is a production of a very low level of a mutant 3, which corresponds to the skipping of exon 6, and then the retention of a part of intron 8, which puts back the frame to normal, actually, like, uh, uh, to, and produce this, uh, this, uh, this uh, full length uh, protein. So by uh, almost full-length protein. So by RT-PCR, we saw that the heterozygous mice, they, ex they express a lower level of the wild type, of course, allele, and there is a, a low amount of the mutant 2 and 3 uh, protein, and uh, uh, mRNA, sorry. And by Western blot, again, we see that uh, there is a lower expression of the full-length wild type protein, and the expected mutant 2 was not detected. So uh, in terms of molecular uh, 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 mechanism, this heterozygous mice they mimic the human situation. So then we ask the question, I come back to this, why uh, do we have a very low level of uh, mutant mRNAs and low level of pro or no uh, protein in this mice? And uh, this was, uh, we worked on this for uh, uh, several uh, years and by using different inhibitors of the translation, but also proteasome inhibitors in cardiac myocytes and or in vivo, we, uh, we finally uh, revealed that uh, the expression of the mutant allele is regulated by both the nonsense mediated mRNA decay at the mRNA level to reduce the, the, the level of the nonsense mRNA, and at the protein level the, by the ubiquitin proteasome system, both system contributing to a low uh, level of mutant protein in, uh, in cardiac myocytes. So together with the expression of the wild type allele, we, uh, res this results in heparin sufficiency. And you can see here on this graph the, 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 the lower amount of uh, myosin many protein C in heterozygous and even more pronounced in the uh, homozygous not in mice. So uh, this heparin insufficiency is known to be one of the major pathomechanisms for hypertrophic annuopathy. And, uh, and diastolic dysfunction. And uh, we later worked uh, uh, more on these uh, uh, questions, and uh, we uh, showed that adrenergic stress or aging in this mouse model lead to uh, impairment of the ubiquitin proteasome system, which uh, could result in accumulation of mutant uh, proteins, which would lead to poison peptides, and therefore lead to uh, even uh, more protoxicity and potentially uh, severe left ventricular hypertrophic and uh, by prognosis. <clears throat> so, uh, 
So we believe that hypertrophic cardiomyopathy actually is, as, is, is associated with both, is, with, a, with both hyper insufficiency and poison peptide uh, mechanisms. So now what about uh, the th therapy of this disease? So the current therapy actually is more empirical and is based on the relief of the, uh, the, relief of the symptoms and it uses uh, the classical uh, uh, treatment as beta blockers, calcium blockers, the antagonist of uh, the uh, renin angiotensis system, and in the worst case, the septolmyectomy or uh, uh, alcohol ablation. But of course, this treatment, unfortunately, they do not prevent hypertrophy, they do not rescue hypertrophy, and uh, they do not prevent any uh, sudden cardiac death. So uh, there is a need for other uh, 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 treatment, and today there are some groups working on uh, preventing diastolic dysfunction or energy depletion, and this is based on the use of calcium desensitizers, like blebistatin, or energy-restoring drugs like perexilin. So we chose the other strategy, which, which is to remove the mutation by uh, gene therapy. So what is uh, the goal, or what was the goal? This is uh, to remove the mutation. The disease gene, as uh, you, you saw, this is a myosin many protein C, which encodes the cardiac myosin many protein C. The mutation, you, you heard about this, the model as well. And the target for uh, this RNA-based therapy is the pre-mRNA. And we use the two different methods, the splice also made the RNA transplacing and the exon skipping uh, strategy. <clears throat> so we focus on this gene. And uh, actually, uh, this I already showed you, this is the most frequent human mutation, so I will come back to this. And this, these are the consequences of the mutation in the homozygous knock-in mice on which we started to work with. So the homozygous, they have uh, two uh, mutant alleles, of course, and they express actually now three different mutants, and this was not expected. And actually, in general, in genetics, we don't know exactly the consequence of the mutations. And in these mice, in the cardiac tissue, this mutation results in this uh, nonsense mRNA. I talked about it already before. And also this uh, frame shift and rescue of uh, the frame of mutant 3 mRNA. But this, uh, this uh, homozygous mice, in, contra in contrast to the heterozygous, they also express the classical missense mRNA, which contains uh, the mutation. So these are the consequences at the protein level. And uh, this part here, PPP, it actually correspond to uh, the phosphorylation sites, which uh, plays an important role in the regulation of the contraction and relaxation. <clears throat> so what about the phenotype of uh, these homozygous uh, uh, mice? So you see here a uh, left ventricular mass to body weight ratio, which was determined by echocardiography and the fractional area shortening as well. And you see the data obtained in, uh, in neonatal mice, actually, from day one to day seven in the wild type in white and in gray in the knock-in. <clears throat> so you see that uh, in the first 24 hours, there is no phenotype in this uh, homozygous knock-in mice. And the phenotype comes just at day two, at postnatal day two, and it starts with the dysfunction of uh, the cardiac dysfunction first, which is then followed by, uh, by uh, 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 left ventricular hypertrophy. And uh, this is not shown here. I should have put this figure as well. And interestingly, so if, you, if we look at the, at the markers of hypertrophy, we don't have anything the first, uh, 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 at, the, at, at postnatal day one, of course. At postnatal day two, we see an accumulation of uh, BNP and ANP, but not of uh, beta mycin and alpha skeletolactin. And alpha skeletolactin actually is accumulated at day three in the nokin, like with hypertrophy. So meaning that BNP and ANP actually are associated with a dysfunction more than with hypertrophy. And uh, uh, interestingly as well, the beta myosinavid chain is not upregulated in this mice. What uh, we found is that the beta myosinavid chain is not downregulated in the knock-in mice in contrast to the wild type. So it remains high, like it is at birth. At birth, there is about 50% expression of alpha and beta myosinavid chain. So we found this quite interestingly interesting, and uh, so therefore what we did actually, we wanted to, we treat, uh, we treat adult mice with this strategy, but also we uh, finally treated neonatal uh, uh, pups to prevent the development of the phenotype. <clears throat> this I uh, show you partially, so in this uh, homozygous knocking, there is really a low level of uh, C-protein, and the mutant protein 
uh, the, 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 the truncated protein was also uh, not uh, detected in this mice. <coughs> So this I showed you already, these are the consequence of the mutation, mutant one, two, and three in this mice, and I will come back to this uh, uh, band uh, 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 later on. So we use these two, two strategies. So the transplacing approach, what does that mean? The idea is to, uh, to, to, to produce an artificial uh, splicing by adding into the cardiac myocyte a molecule which is named a pre-transplacing molecule which correspond to the cDNA, which encodes the wild type sequence between exon one and six. And uh, this molecule also contains all the, the, the elements necessary for the splicing, including the five prime splice sites, some link, linker uh, domains, and a binding domain, which is complementary to intron six, in order to produce what we expect, the five prime transplacing, which corresponds to uh, mRNA containing from the, which contains the exogenous uh, expression and the and, and the, uh, in the five prime part and the endogenous expression from the three prime uh, part. So if it works, normally we can, uh, we, 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 we are expecting as well a reduction of the C splicing and, uh, and uh, 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 the production of a repaired full length wild type C protein mRNA. So we can uh, easily detect the repaired mRNA because we put a flag tag in, in the five prime end. And uh, this, uh, these molecules, we test a different one, but this one was uh, actually inserted in, under the control of two different promoters, the CMV promoter at first, and the second one was a, a human cardiac troponin T promoter. And uh, we did also two different things on the, five, on the three prime part. The first one was a poly A, and the second one, we removed the poly A to prevent actually, or to decrease as much as possible, the export of this mRNA and the production of a truncated protein. So this, uh, this molecule, they were uh, and then uh, packaged in uh, uh, AAV. And uh, we first evaluated uh, the, the, the expression of AAV6, serotype 6, in cardiac myocytes. And uh, we evaluated this for uh, seven days or nine days. And uh, we were able to evaluate then uh, the, 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 um, the transplacing by RT-PCR. And these are the primers which were used to, to amplify the repaired mRNA. And, and these are uh, general primers which amplify the total level of C-protein mRNA. So below, you see the results of RT-PCR. This, is a re this corresponds to the repaired mRNA. And you see that we, we see uh, two different bands. One, in the case of the, of the molecule contain, contain, uh, without the poly A, and the other one with the molecule we, which contains the poly, the poly A, but not in this PTMR, which is actually uh, the same molecule as the PTM, but with the reverse binding domain. So we should not expect any transplacing. So it worked. And uh, of course, by uh, the, the, uh, of course, not of course, but the, the, the minus RT were also negative. So in principle, it worked in cardiac myocytes. The efficiency was better for, the, the, for, for this molecule without poly A than with. But uh, when we checked for the, for the total mRNA, we saw no major difference between the non-transduced cardiac myocytes and this PTM. There is a, a bit of a different pattern, but there was still presence of mutant mRNAs uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this experiment. <clears throat> so we were able to, to quantify this and it, it corresponds, the transplacing efficiency in cardiac myocytes represent about 30 to 50% of the total uh, uh, C-protein mRNA in the knock-in uh, mice, which is quite good, but the mRNA level in this knock-in mice is low, it's 20% of the wild type, so it represents about 10% of repaired mRNA when compared to the wild type. So then, of course, this 10% should produce a, a, a protein, and uh, we wanted to detect this protein. And uh, we were not able to detect this protein by classical Western blood. So this is a, the, the blood stained with a flat antibody with a, with a different group, PTM, PTM reverse, and PTM delta polio, transduced cardiac myocyte, the non-transduced here. And this is a positive control for a full length C protein after transfection in hex cells. And you see that, uh, I mean, you don't see anything actually by a classical Western blot. 
The second uh, uh, thing I wanted to show you is this part, which corresponds actually to the same blood, but at the 35 kilo Dalton uh, <laughs> level, which corresponds to the expression of the PTM, of the transpassing molecule. And you see that in the presence of the polyA, there is a marked expression, I mean, accumulation of this protein, which could affect uh, the calcmyocytes, of course. And this is considerably reduced in the, in the absence of the polyA. So uh, this repaired protein could be detected only after immunoprecipitation. You see here the immunoprecipitation with the anti-flac antibody, and uh, which was obtained in the presence of, of the, in, in the case of the cadacmyocytes transduced with a PTM delta polyA molecule only. So this is low, but it worked. <clears throat> And uh, in cardiac myocyte, we could also detect 9% uh, of uh, cardiomyocyte positive, I mean, um, C protein positive, uh, or cardiomyocyte positive cells. In 9% of them, we could detect the repaired uh, full length protein. And you see the staining with the anti flag antibody, the staining with the anti CMOBPC antibody, and you see the merging edge, and you see this typical uh, doublet of C protein around the M band of the sarcomere. So in principle, it worked in 9% of the calcmyocytes. So then we switched to the in vivo, and uh, we did uh, adult uh, experiments and also in adult mice and also in, uh, in neonatal, uh, uh, neonatal mice. And these are the data obtained in neonatal pups. As I showed you before, they do not have any phenotype, so we treated them with uh, serotype 9 of AV. And this was, uh, this was uh, the, 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 the number of uh, virus particle, two times 10 to the 11. And this was injected in the, in the temporal vein in these mice. And we uh, evaluated the molecular consequence of this seven weeks after uh, administration of uh, the virus. So these are the results of RT-PCR. And this is the results obtained in one mouse treated with a PTM delta polyA and one mouse treated with a PBS, and in different tissues, the heart, the liver, and the skeletal muscle. And you see that the repaired C protein mRNA worked uh, in the heart, and only in the heart, and uh, not, in the, of course, in the PBS-treated uh, animal. Now, if you look at uh, the, the total C protein mRNA, you see that the, the, the pattern did not differ between the treated and untreated uh, uh, mice which indicates that the level of repaired mRNA is very low in vivo, and actually it was less than 1%. But it worked, and it was not, uh, this, 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 was, uh, this was not shown uh, before. So this was already a very important uh, proof of concept that it works. And by uh, Western blood, I don't show you this, there was no uh, uh, repaired uh, protein. And uh, this was also very difficult to detect this by, by uh, in cardiac sections. And uh, finally, we detected a faint band after immunoprecipitation in this, uh, in this uh, mouse. So this is the first evidence of successful 5' uh, transplacing in vivo, and uh, in, not only in the CADAC field, but in, in, in general in this field of transplacing. And 5' uh, transplacing, of course, you can imagine that there is a 3' part as well, which is done, in particular, particularly for neuromuscular disorders, but not only. And uh, there is also some group working on the double uh, transplacing, so uh, like an exchange of one exon, uh, wild type exon uh, with the others. And second, this is a proof of concept of mRNA repair for this uh, most uh, uh, frequent uh, cardiac genetic disease. Okay, so the second strategy I would like to share with you is the antisense oligonucleotide method of exon skipping. And uh, this, this was bed, based on uh, this band, which actually was found in the knock-in mice. And this band uh, corresponds to an alternative spliced isoform, which uh, is uh, in frame deleted of exon 5 and 6. And uh, this induces skipping of different amino acids, but the production of, uh, of uh, almost full-length protein. And interestingly, this band was also detected in the wild-type mice after two rounds of PCR, and you see here, this is PCR, first PCR, there is only the, the wild type uh, mRNA, and after a, a second PCR on this band, we, can det we could detect this uh, variant 4 uh, deleted of exon 5 and 6, which suggested 
that if it's present even at a low level in the wild type, it should not be unfunctional. It should be uh, not. It should not be bad for the for the animals. So we did different tests in in vitro. First, we express actually this uh, variant four together with a different mutant and the wild type in egg uh, cells. And uh, you see that this variant four it at least expressed as much as a wild type. And you see again that this mutant two, which is a nonsense uh, mRNA producing truncated protein, which should be here, is also was also unstable in egg cells. <clears throat> So we also uh, uh, showed that this variant 4 is able to be phosphorylated, and therefore it could be regulated by, uh, during the contraction and relaxation. And finally, you see here in calacmaricides that variant 4 is uh, correctly incorporated in the sarcomere. You can see the doublet some from, from sometimes here, for example. And this is costained with a, a C protein. And, uh, and then you see in the merge image that it's correctly incorporated at the right place in the calacmaricides. So in addition, <coughs> we uh, actually uh, uh, cloned, uh, we produced uh, AAV of this variant 4. And this was for us non, uh, unexpected, actually, and I followed the discussion of this morning, because uh, altogether, it's 5.2 uh, kilo base pair, including the, the, the promoter. This is a troponin, uh, troponin T promoter. It's about 500 base pairs. And altogether, we had more than 5 kb. And we thought this will not work, but it worked. So um, <clears throat> what you see here, this is an injection of AV9. No, this, in this case, it was CMV, sorry. And uh, with the same dose in one day old mice, if, and we evaluated the expression seven days after. And uh, this, these are the rescue of the, f this, these are uh, echo data, the ventricular mass to body weight ratio, fractional area shortening. And again, what you see is that the wild type mice and the knock-in mice, and the knock-in knock -in mice treated with PBS, knock-in mice treated with, with, with variant 4, and you see this hypertrophy and uh, systolic dysfunction in knock-in mice, and the partial rescue of all uh, in the presence of this variant 4. And if you look at the NPPA and NPPB mRNA level, you see this f completely prevented after overexpression of this variant 4. So we believe that this molecule is not toxic and it's even good for, for, for the heart in this mice. So what we did is that we forced the expression of this variant 4. And uh, to do so, we uh, produced, uh, we, we designed antisense oligonucleotides, which uh, are complementary of, uh, of this uh, red sequence, which are exonic splicing answers. And uh, therefore, they, they, they prevent the, fix the, the binding of proteins which are involved in the splicing process. And we expect to produce a variant 4 mRNA deleted of exon 5 and 6. <clears throat> and then this protein, which is deleted of amino acids before the, this domain, which, in, which is involved in the regulation of the calic contraction and relaxation. So these uh, RNs, antisense oligonucleotides, they were uh, inserted in the small nuclear RNAs uh, under the control of the U7 promoter. And they were organized in tandems and then packaged in, in, in AV. And uh, I will show you only the data obtained in vivo. And this is uh, AV9, this promoter, <laughs> uh, U7 small nuclear RNA, encoding this uh, antisense oligonucleotides. Mm -hmm. And they were uh, systemically delivered in uh, neonatal knock-in mice with this uh, dose. Mm -hmm. And these are the data obtained by RT-PCR in PBS-treated mice and in the, in the mice treated with the AV9. Uh, so what do we see here? We see first that uh, the variant 4 mRNA is markedly, is markedly accumulated in these uh, treated mice compared to the wild type. And second, we see that two of the three mutants, mutants 1 and 3, they are downregulated or even absent in, in these uh, mice. So the, in addition, you see that this mutant 2 uh, did not uh, differ too much between the two groups. But this is a nonsense mRNA. And these nonsense mRNA do not produce any truncated protein. So we believe that there is really accumulation of this variant for mRNA and then protein, which could be uh, uh, um, responsible <laughs> of a good uh, rescue. So in terms of function, this was the case. And these data were obtained seven days after uh, uh, transduction. And you see again that hypertrophin the knock-in, 
dysfunction, and you see that the injection of these antisense oligonucleotides via AV9 uh, were sufficient to rescue or partially to prevent the development of the phenotype in, in, in these uh, mice. So, in summary, this U7 small nuclear RNA, which carry antisense oligonucleotides, mediated exon skipping, and the production of uh, modified in-frame variant mRNA protein, and the CADAC phenotype was uh, rescued. So, altogether, we believe that uh, these studies open the way towards uh, molecular uh, causal therapy of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and more generally for other CADAC genetic uh, disease. Then I, I put two other slides, but I think I will, I'm not sure that I'm going to present them because actually this is uh, Thomas will speak more about this afterwards. But the idea is that, of course, in the future, it's to go towards individual therapy uh, with the use of uh, human IPS derived cardiac, uh, IPS cells derived cardiac myocytes. And Thomas will explain you uh, much better than me uh, after. So the idea is from the patients, and we started actually this, uh, this approach, is to get a skin biopsy to, to culture the fibroblasts and to reprogram them into uh, uh, induced pluripotent stem cell uh, line to induce cardiac differentiation. And then Thomas will present you in detail this engineered heart tissue. And where we would like to work on is to, 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 to try the different molecular therapy on this engineered heart tissue and then to go back uh, to take a this therapeutic decision for the patient. So this is uh, the future. And this is, but this has kit because Thomas, he will, he will show you many. This is an example of uh, engineered heart tissue obtained from cardiac myocytes from uh, induced pluripotent stem cells. <clears throat> okay, so I would like to finish with a, with a photo of the group and many in blue, uh, the persons involved in the molecular therapy. So uh, for the exon skipping strategy, Christina Godike Ornung and Verena Berens Gavlik were the, 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 the main actors. And for the transplacing approach, an Italian uh, woman, Giulia Marini, uh, who is together with a PhD student, Doreen Stimpel, and the technician, uh, Lisa Kramer and, uh, and uh, Zilke Reichmann. And for the echo uh, analysis, and also more importantly, the injection in the temporal vein of neonatal mice, the technician, uh, uh, Birgit Gertz, is uh, really the expert. And without her, I think we could not have done this uh, project. And finally, the, the collaboration, of course, in the pharmacology in Hamburg with Thomas and many others. In, uh, we have a, a, um, a new organization in Hamburg with the HCM Center together with the cardiology. And there is a, a nice uh, interaction between cardiology, cardiac surgery, and pharmacology for recruitment of the patient genetics and also uh, IPS, uh, I mean, uh, skin biopsy and uh, research. And uh, for, for the molecular therapy, we had this collaboration with a group in Paris of Thomas Voigt, mainly with uh, Stephanie Laurent and Luis Garcia. And uh, we got also a EU grant to work on these uh, approaches. And uh, now I thank you very much for your attention. I take your questions. <laughs>